Coach, I guess 10 practices in the spring. Just what are your overall impressions of the defense so far? You know what? You can see the guys growing. Um, the guys that were here last year understanding the system and obviously we changing the names and different things like that as far as what we're calling it. But you can see the growth, you know, each practice and, and we're putting it, we're putting more on their plate because we're going from four down to three down, three down to four down, different things like that. And the guys that are new, is all new to them. So doing some things to help them kind of learn the system a lot faster. But it's going good, going good. We've seen the, the fun, I guess, in the last week or so. Just what what, what do you look, want to get accomplished with that defense? Just what does that bring to the table? Yeah, just trying to put some, some stress on the offenses that we see. So we could go from four down to our three down buck. We could stand landing up whoever was at uh, buck, uh, Nico. Um, he's at buck as well. And we could do some different things with the personnel that we have. Um, to put stress on offenses. So being able to go from four down to three down and to our Oki Mint stuff uh, has been good for us, just teaching it and learning it in, in, as far as I install. Danico Slaughter has really taken over with the first team defense. I mean, what have you seen from him? Sam said he thought he's performing as good as any defensive back you guys have. Yeah, no, Danico Slaughter, he, he, has, he has a cool calm about him. He's a veteran. He's played a lot of ball. His demeanor, he has an old, old demeanor as far as like, He's a man, you know, what he say, he means what he says, say what he mean. But he's the type of guy that's really smart, really smart. He comes in, he just loves ball. So the more and more he comes in and learn ball, you can see that it's showing on the field and his leadership skills as well. So happy that we have him. It seems like Coach Woodson and Coach Wilson, you know, work really well together on the field and practice. They're almost like the same person, it seems like. What are your thoughts on them and that relationship? Well, it starts off with the, with the, the type of per person they are you know, type of people they are. It starts off with that. Man, they just unbelievable people um, in the way they teach their guys and love on their guys and the relationships they have in their room, you know, and the guys respond to their coaching. You know, you can coach them hard because they know you care about them. And Coach Wilson and Coach Woodson does a great job with that, uh, with their group. So it's always fun to see those guys work together because it's two guys back there. And, you know, and, it's, and a lot of times when you have two DB coaches, DB coaches, you never know. But the way they mesh together is awesome. Just curious on your linebacker core, what you thought of the addition of Sori and, and Brad Spence has, has taken a, a big yeah. step forward. Dean also, mm -hmm. Sanford. Yeah, so it's, 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 what's the fun thing about it is these guys are getting every rep to get better, you know, to get better. So every guy that you name, Sori's doing good. Uh, Dean is doing good. Spence is doing good. Alex is doing good. Henley has come along. Henley's done some really good stuff at practice, and Brooks both is another one. But adding Sore is, is has been really good for us. His athletic ability and just being able to – he's a guy that played a lot of ball. The other guys haven't played because they were freshmen last year. They're going into their sophomore year. But now it's – only reason people don't know about them because they haven't played. doesn't mean they're not good enough. So it's been good to kind of see those guys grow and the whole room is getting better. And like you said, Brad Spence is doing some really good things for us as well. Do you those guys kind of as interchangeable or is one – a better fit of the will and one's a better fit of a mic? They're interchangeable because we do some di some different things defensively. And then and what I like to do is have them do both so they can learn. So you won't just say, okay, you're a Mac and you're a money. In the old days, they call it a mic and a wheel. We call it a Mac and a money. So the more they can learn, the better. So now when we get into our dime package when they in 10 personnel and maybe our money has to go to Mac, he can understand exactly what he has to do. So I just I try to keep them moving around and having musical chairs. And you just never know. Injuries happen, different things, and you got to put – it's not – you want to put the best guy up next. Not, okay, he's – this guy's the two money. He's up next. Well – this this two this two Mac may be better than the two money, so you want to put them over there. So we try our best to kind of have those guys play both positions, so you can put the best guys on the field. The way Spence is kind of working that wide nine and also working at linebacker. Do you see him as a guy that could possibly rack up a lot of sacks for you? Maybe even lead you in sacks and tackles, maybe. Uh, well, I don't, I'm just trying to get him to play. You, <laughs> yeah, that's a great course. You said lead in sacks and tackles, but I'm just trying to get him to line. He he. He could do so many different things well, but at the same time, for me, what I did was I said, okay, he could play the buck, he could he could play the money, he could play the, he could play the Mac, he could play the Sam backer. He's played all of those, but then you sit back, you say, okay, let's put him at one position and let him go ahead and learn this, and then now we can put him over there in some different situations. But um, man, he's still learning, he's still growing. Um, if he happens to lead the team in sacks and tackles, that's awesome. But I'm just I'm just getting him lined up right now. <laughs>
mentioned Brooks both. He's Harrison's one of the papers I have. Uh, can you? I know he's helped on special teams. Could, do you see him maybe getting some linebacker reps this year? Or what kind of chance? Yeah. So I mean, he, he, first of all, Coach Fountain loves him on special teams. He does. He does a really good job on special teams. He's a very very smart defensive player. He's a guy that we could put at the Mac in the money. He's a guy that loves this university. He's been here a long time. He knows it inside out. He's a guy that we trust on the field. Um, he's earned that right. He's really doing a really good job for us. And then the uh, the uh, defensive tackles, the interior defensive line, um, talk about them, how they're coming along. I know you have probably four you feel good about there, mm-hmm. don't you? Yeah, so I, I would start I would start out with, with, with Cam Ball. I think Cam is doing a really good job this spring. I think he's taking his, his game to another level. With, and Coach Adams does a really good job with the whole front four, um, coaching those guys and getting those guys prepared and, and you can see the growth. You can see the growth from just from last year. Start with Cam, Cam Ball. And Ed Gregory is a, is a seasoned vet. He's a guy that's played a lot of ball. He's an athletic defensive tackle for us as well, and he can hold a point. So very pleased by those guys. You got Ingram Ford as well. You know, he, he's, I think, 380-something pounds. He's a big, massive guy um, that's hard to move, and continue, he's continued to grow. Um, in that position as well, and we got so many get different guys. We put we put Caleb uh, James inside as well, um, and I'm trying not to forget anybody. But the interior coach Adams does a really really good job with those guys getting them prepared. And in this league, in any league, but especially the SEC, it starts up front, and you know with, with the whole front. So we could do some different things. We talked about Ingram Far just putting 380 over the center and getting into some three four stuff and. And just telling them, okay, you don't have to think about nothing. You just go straight ahead and, and blow the center back. That that helps guys like that. But um, you can see the growth with the whole group. Coach Petrino told us on Tuesday he has slowed install down a little bit this week. W- where are you guys and where you want to get to in terms of installation? Have you slowed down some? Yes, it's pretty much it's pretty much in. We just got some different situational stuff. Um, but as far as the install, it's pretty it's pretty much in. Um, now again, now we slow down, and now we can say because you're going from four down to three down to you doing some different things and it gets a lot it gets taxing on the guys as far as just learning so now you just slow it down and say okay this is this is what we're going to do this week we pretty much has it in have it in um got some third down stuff that we that we're still putting in some third down but for the base calls we we're pretty much good and we got some short yardage stuff that we got to put in but for the most part it's in it's in question but scrimmage was two practices ago i wanted to get your thoughts on what you thought of the first scrimmage and then for Saturday, what you want to see on Saturday? Yeah, so I I think first what we got to get better at. I start with that. We have to do a better job tackling. We got to do a better job running our feet on tackle tackling. We have big backs, so you can't you can't arm tackle those guys. You got to put your body on them, and then, and you got to run your feet. I would say that's that's the main thing we we got out of that is just the tackling. Didn't say didn't say it was bad, but we we could be better. We could be better at tackling. Um, and you can see in the situationals, we did some we did some really good stuff situational. Um. Because I think the first drive, they went down there and they scored. Went down and scored. It was a, it was a miscommunication. It was a, it was a great offensive play. And then from there, we got out. We got our feet in the ground and got calmed down. But the tackling, the yards out the contact is is what we have to fix. And that's what we've been focusing on, just tackling, tackling. Because, we, like I said, we got big backs. We got SEC-style backs where you stick your arm out now, you'll pull back a nub and take your arm off. So you got you to put your body on them. And team and seven on seven from what we saw today. What was your thought on the competition today? Oh, it's always great competition. Our offense is doing a great, great, some great things. And Coach Petrino is doing a great job with our offense as, as well. And, you know, in seven on seven is always a lot of, it's a lot of reps that we get in seven on seven. And we need it for our quarterbacks, you know, because we're we evaluating quarterbacks. We need it for the back end with DBs and receivers. So we need, we need those reps. Um, so it's always good. It's good to get those reps. And, Team, we did some good stuff. Team offense did some good stuff. So we'll go back and watch the film. And it's times where may may or may not be a sack, and we continue to let it let it play. Um, but our offense is doing some really really good things, and Coach Petrino is doing some really good things. Quite a few freshmen, early enrollees, y'all brought in. Just what are some of the early challenges? You know, whenever you bring those guys in, and any of those that you've seen maybe take a lot of strides uh, through these practices. You know what? I, I I really do think all of our freshmen are doing a really good job. You know, you start in the secondary. If I get to naming all of them, I forget someone, so I'm not gonna name anyone. I think all of the freshmen 
have been a really, really good hit for us. Uh, really, really good, smart players, tough. We got some length back there. Uh, we have some quickness. We have some toughness. So I, I, th I think we did a really good job bringing those guys in. And then we have some, some guys in the, on the defensive line that's doing really good for us. And we brought a linebacker in as well. Obviously, all these guys, they haven't even been to their prom yet. So, you know, the head is spinning, but you can see the athletic ability. You can see the talent there. Um, with all of the freshmen that we have. So I, I, I'm very pleased by the freshmen that we have. Uh, just on the topic of youth, I think seven of your nine linebackers, scholarship linebackers, are first or second year players. Mm -hmm. Is there any need or desire maybe to look to the portal, maybe get a, a veteran guy there to right, boost right that now, Right now, I'm just focused on getting those guys better. And then once the portal opens, we'll, we'll kind of think about that or – See if we do do go on the portal or do not go on the portal. What I do think about these guys that were freshmen, it was three freshmen last year that are, that are, that are getting a chance to get every snap, and you can see exactly what they what they can do, and very pleased by where they're at right now. You to the other side of the ball with Taylor Green. I was curious your thoughts on the the challenges that he brings with his legs, and um, just he's got obviously some experience from, from yeah. Boise too. Really, I think he's a really good football player. I think before we even get to the football, I think he's a good person. I think I think he's a good young man. I think he's a leader, and he doesn't he doesn't have to say anything. You can just watch it. You know, he's doing stuff on his own. He's always coming up, and he's meet he's meeting on his own with Coach Petrino. He 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 has a pro type of mentality the way he goes about his business, um, and he's a good person. He's a good person. Let's just start there, and then once you go on the field, you know, you see him. He he runs like a gazelle. Like he can run, run. You know, and he's throwing the ball, you know, and he's got some accuracy with his throws. And I'm glad he's on our team, glad he's on our team. But it starts with the person that he is and the work work ethic that he's had, that he has. So very pleased by what I see out of him. You talked about Slaughter earlier, but what about your other two transfer defensive backs? Just what have you liked from them and how they've adjusted? Yeah, yeah, both of both. Um, Cuddy, Cuddy is um, doing really good for us. He's at the corner. Uh, position and then Miguel is at safety. Both of those guys, all three of those guys, was a hit for us in the secondary, and I'm glad that we got them. And because when, when, once you go into the portal, you don't know. You watch the film, and you, you really don't know what you're getting as far as character wise. And because like in high school, you're able to do your homework, you're, ready, you're able to get them on campus, you're able to sit down with the family. When you go in the portal, you really don't know. And all three of those guys have the right mentality of toughness. And all three of those guys sit in the front row. They sit in the front row, and and that's just the way they go about their business. And Nico on the defensive line, just how have you seen him grow now that he's kind of getting his opportunity? You're talking about a guy that took, like, huge steps. He's doing really good for us. He's doing really good for us. He's a guy that's flashing, you know, and, and it's, in, his, in his eyes, it's his time now. He's doing some really good stuff for us and um, comes with great energy, comes with great energy. And we ask, we ask those defensive end bucks to do a lot. You can't – it's not one of them deals where you're just rushing every time. You got to drop. You got to do some different things. And he's doing – Nico is doing some really good stuff. Jaheim Singletary was a guy we saw a lot early last year that maybe not as much late. Kind of what areas are, are, are of focus for him this spring, and how is he coming along in those areas? You know what? You know, um, so we call him slim, but Jaheim and Keon has actually took their game up to another level as far as the sense of urgency, the sense of urgency. And you, you'll hear Coach Wilson and Coach Woodson talk about the money phase when the ball is in the air or you're getting a dig route and you see the, the ball is being thrown, like the money phase of getting the ball out. And that's just that competing at the top of the route that we call the money phase. But I, I, I can see Jaheim, he's taking his game to another level as far as the sense of urgency that's there with him and Keon. And Landon Jackson, how big of a boost was it? Like how happy were you that he decided to come back? And kind of where could he maybe take his game to the next level? Yeah, very happy he came back. You know, you, you get an all-SEC guy that comes back and the way he goes. But he's a pro. You know, he, he's a guy – that goes about his business the right way. He's getting married Saturday. Like, he's, like, grown, grown. So, he's getting married Saturday. You'll see him when he's going over the bags. If he hit a bag before, before I used to say, go back, he's going back on his own. And he just has that mentality that he wants to get better. You know, he's watching a lot of film on his own. He's coming in there and just getting the technique things down with Coach Adams. And, and that's what you want out of a guy like that because everybody's looking at him. You know, he's all SEC. So, you know, the leadership by him being a good player – Guys going to listen and follow him, and they follow his lead as far as what he's doing, and he's lead by his, his, his example and his actions. 
Quincy behind him, younger guy, kind of in this similar size yeah. and everything. How beneficial is it to him to have a guy like Landon ahead of him? And, and what have you seen in Quincy's development? Quincy, Quincy is very talented. He's, he's very talented. If you look at his numbers in the weight room, it's, it's just unreal. And it's really good for him to be behind Landon and watch Landon and watch the way he works. Because I, I think Quincy has a bright future. Quincy could be as good as he wants to be. I mean, he, he, he has that type of talent. And for him to be able to see Landon, and see how you can go. Not not the, we ain't talk, not even the talent. Just how you go about your business at work. You know how how do you have your notebook and your pen your pen and paper and everything? How you how you locked in on Coach Adams and how you coming in on your own and watching film on your own? the different things that you can learn from a veteran is going to be really big for Quincy. Last Saturday, offense scored quick first couple mm -hmm. possessions. Defense seemed to get stronger and stronger. One in the two minute stuff. What are you looking for this Saturday in the scrimmage from defense? Yeah, so it won't be it won't be a, a, a scrimmage. This, we have situations where it's tackling, you know, and just like just like they want to score, we want to we want to stop them. Um, now you, you're installing, so you really so it's not like offense versus defense. It is, but you want to install, so you won't get into like okay, you're trying to scheme against each other, but we don't want them to score. Right, so we we want to stop that. But this Saturday is going to be more situations, and whatever that situation is, we want to win the situation. You guys have had conversation about who gets the uh, microphone in the helmet. Is Sori in that conversation? And what are your thoughts about that, and how it's going to work? Um, well, I don't know who's going to have whoever the linebacker, whoever the start line. You assuming that he's going to start? Yeah, whoever the whoever the start linebacker is going to have the mic in his, in his helmet. It could be a safety, you know. It could be a safety. We don't we don't know who who is going to be, um, as far as having it. And I don't know how I feel. Like the the thing is in the NFL they huddle up, so you could talk on the mic and you could make a call. Then offense, if they going fast, you you're gonna have to signal. It just you just don't have enough. You just don't have enough time. Now if everybody had the the the, the mic or whatever the speaker in their helmet, then you could do it. But the teams you're gonna see, I, I would imagine you. If teams are using the mic, you're gonna see offenses going like warp speed fast to make you signal. Um, and that's, I don't know how I feel about it. You know, now if everybody was huddling or if everybody had the the uh, the microphone or whatever, your speaker in their helmet, then you could use it. But all offenses is gonna do. They gonna go warp speed fast, and you still gonna have to signal. What do you like about what you've seen from Sori? Very athletic. Very athletic. Um, you know what? He's 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 such a good person. Like he's so happy to be here. He's so humbled to be here. Um, no sir, yes sir. You know he gets to the ball. You, you, he's athletic, athletic. So you you see him getting better and better each each practice. And I'm glad we got him. How that relationship developed? Um, I think he said he knew you from Auburn yeah. when he was being recruited and stuff. Just. How did that unfold with him so, landing at Arkansas? Yeah, when I when I was at when I was at Auburn, I recruited him like heavy, and it came down to me and Glenn Schumann, that's at Georgia. Both of us were recruiting him, and I know I know his whole family. And so when he was in the portal, I already knew like kind of what I was getting. So a lot of times when you're in the portal, like you said, you don't know the parents, you don't know nothing. But I knew I was getting a very athletic uh, player. Knew I was getting a good person. Um, now we had to battle for him because everybody in America wanted him. Uh, I'm glad we got him. But, the, you know, you kind of – when you have that prior relationship, that's the one good thing about the portal. You can recruit guys, and if you don't get them the first time around, you get them the second time around, and you already have that background. A couple weeks, but after spring is over, you've always jumped right in, I guess, to the contact period and stuff for recruiting, but it's also the portal on top of it. I mean, what is that like as an assistant coach just – you're on the road recruiting. You got to find portal guys. You got to worry about your own team and stuff. It's just so different these last few years. Right. Um, yeah, it's different. I want to recruit the guys that's obviously we, we want to recruit the guys that are here. We want to keep, we don't want to lose a guy. And obviously, if somebody may leave, that's just the nature of the beast. But we don't want to lose a guy. And then if we're going to, going to get additions to our roster, we got to get them on. We got, okay, as soon as they hit the portal, we got to try to get them on campus first. You know, you may want to try to go see them because it is a contact period. Then you have to get your your schedule for the high school guys as far as going out doing spring recruiting. So it's a lot of moving parts. It's a lot of moving parts, and you just got to be ready to jump on the flight and do different things. But it's part of it. Like, you could complain about it and, and be a dinosaur, or you can adjust. So I, I plan to adjust to it.
it's like rely on the recruiting department in a big way. It's like, hey, where am I supposed to be today? Or is it? Yeah, are you yeah. Doing co- it? Co- so, um, Hub Javon Hubbard, he does a really good job with our dep- recruiting department, and we rely on them. You know, and Coach Pittman has done a great job of hiring guys in that department, and they already had the schedule. It's very organized, so we know. It's very organized, and it's a lot of last-minute things because things happen at, at the last minute, but it's very organized starting with what, what Hub does in his department. So it's when it first happened, it was like, oh, it's a lot of a lot of moving parts, and it happens fast, but now it's a few years in. The department knows exactly, you know, what to do, and we have a really good department that gets us ready for that. Thanks, Coach. Good. Oh, awesome. Go Hawks. Yeah.